Hello again, everyone. I am here with a profiling of some specialty nib fountain pens. And this is mainly because I wanted to do a follow-up of this Aurora fountain pen that I uh, unboxed on the channel, but I did not test before. I will put a link down below to that unboxing, but I did end up filling it with Pilot's Con Pecky ink which is beautiful in here. Um, although I have decided that once I am done with the current fill, I probably will uh, try to find a waterproof ink to, so that I can use this for sketching because I think that this pen based on its abilities is gonna be perfect for that. But I'll go into that a little bit more when I actually test out the pen for you. So there's this one. And then there is this one, which is an Esterbrook Junior pocket pen but it does not have its original nib on it. So uh, the original nib was quite scratchy and I was not really a fan. Um, I don't know if it would just wasn't properly tuned or, or what the deal was, but I wasn't too happy with it. So, but it is a standard number five nib. So I had another nib, a specialty nib on a different pen that I swapped out and put it on here. This is a Franklin, Franklin Christoff Sig nib. Um, I forget what the S stands for, but it's italic grind, S-I-G, I forget what the S stands for, <laughs> but I'll put a link down below to, uh, the website for Franklin Christoph where they sell these, but this is a specific grind specific to them. I have had a few issues with this particular nib, um, both pens that I've had it on, including this one. Uh, I've had some hard start issues and I think part of it is just because the um, the the ink flow is kind of an issue like it takes it's very hungry for ink and I feel like it kind of runs out of ink if you're writing for it with it in long sessions so it might be more of a short session pen <laughs> um, that same problem has not been the case with this or or even the Aurora so this is a Diplomat Arrow in the lavender, I think it's lavender, purple, I don't remember. But uh, it was one of the first italic cursive, grind, cursive italic grinds that Goulet Pens offered on a pen that they just sort of had off the shelf. This, so this was custom ground by someone, and uh, but they sold them in the store. And they may or may not be out of stock by the time you see this, so... Um, I'll put a link down below. They had this both in the purple and the orange, but the orange was all sold out the last I looked and this was, I don't know. I don't know the status of this one. I love this purple color. It's amazing. I, I love it. <laughs> so I'm surprised that that one didn't sell out right away too. <laughs> but um, I'll show you what the cursive italic looks like written and sort of the differences between these other nibs. So this is my Esther Brook SD in this uh, lavender purple again I don't remember but uh, I have profiled this pen on the channel before so I will put a link down below to that other video but this one has a journaler nib on it which is uh, a little bit smaller than the cursive italic as far as the um, the line it makes but it's very similar um, and I've, I've actually found that cursive italic is an amazing grind and it's probably one of my favorites and then this one I've also profiled on the channel before. This was a gift from my lovely husband. It was my first uh, custom nib grind. It's an architect grind, which I love. And uh, this is on a Twisby 520 rose gold, uh, smoke rose gold, I think that was called. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get out some paper and test these for you and show you some of the differences. So uh, this one, even though, the, so this is an Italian pen and uh, it has a specialty nib grind called the Gotcha nib. And this nib is a lot like a Japanese grind, which I've for, now forgotten the name of, but it used to only be something that Sailor did, but now some other nib grinders are doing it. Um, and this is very similar to that. So um, just about the pen a little bit before I start writing. So I didn't really talk about the performance of the pen or anything in my prior video because I just did the unboxing. So I did want to tell you that um, one of my complaints originally is that it felt kind of light and insubst insubstantial, but with the ink in it, it, it must hold a ton of ink because once the ink is in there, it actually has a really good weight to it. 
and I feel like with that additional weight, it's kind of taking taken care of my concern about it being too lightweight of a pen. So like I said, I put Konpeki in here and I will show you what it looks like. So this pen, or this nib rather, it will write different size lines depending on the angle that you're writing. And uh, it also writes a different size line top and bottom as, to, as opposed to side to side. So I'm gonna, just gonna start with top and bottom. So here we go. You've got a much broader line. So it's kind of like an architect nib in that way. Because an architect nib, you have a broader line side to side and a narrower line top to bottom, which is the opposite of uh, the cursive italic and things like that. So, um, okay, so I'm gonna start at a really low angle and say, hello. So that's really broad, right? So let's write at a slightly higher angle. Not too much difference. Slightly higher angle. Not too much difference, but you're starting to be able to tell the difference from the first one to the second one. Go up a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more. So as you can see, it's definitely different. And then if I go to the back of the nib, it's super tiny. And this is part of the reason why I feel like this pen would be good for sketching, because these tiny, 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 <laughs> I just invented a new word, these tiny lines, these tiny little lines are really great for hatching and things if you want something to be sort of subtle. And something like this is gonna be great for, you know, sort of your standard line. But then it gets kind of fun up here with the broader lines. So like I said, this is the Aurora. Um, and I've forgotten which model it is, but it's the color um, Luce Blue. It's a kaleidoscopial, I believe. Okay, and then this is with a gotcha nib, which I think is abbreviated. And this is a fine, I believe. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. So I, I'd say that this is, I, I have written with this, and but I have to, um, passages of things, but I really do have to pay attention to the angle at which I am holding the pen, which makes it, you know, not such an enjoyable experience if you're constantly focusing on that. One other little sort of niggling thing that I have, this this curve here, so as you can see, it, it sort of, it curves and then it has a little bit flat bit here. That flat bit is just, it was not very pleasant for my hand. I think if you grip your pen further back, and I actually tried to do that, I tried to grip it further back, you're gonna have a little bit of a better writing experience, but that little lip here was um, sometimes annoying. So just FYI. All right, so now I am gonna go over to this Franklin Kristoff nib that is in this Esterbrook. So with this one, you're gonna get, oh, and again, okay. So side to side, you're gonna get a narrow line. Top to bottom, you're gonna get a broader line. So it's essentially the opposite. And this is gonna be the same, although you can write with it at different angles. You're gonna get sort of a different look there. So I'm just gonna say, let's see. Um, I wonder too if it's because um, of holding it upside down in a pen case. I don't know. But I've had nothing but trouble with it <laughs> as far as ink flow. So, um, so very thin side to side, broader top to bottom. Like I said, it's kind of the opposite. This is uh, held sort of with, a, with the nib flat. This is held with the nib at an angle. You're gonna be able to get different looks here. And again, flow issues. And it's not the pen because it had the same issues on the other pen. So then let's go to this Diplomat Arrow. And this one is probably one of my favorites of this lot here. 
So again, you're gonna get a broader line, top to bottom, thinner line, but it's not as dramatic as the SIG. Um, it just, I feel like it really, you can kind of get holding it sideways, holding it straight. I generally hold it straight when I write. It's just, um, it's beautiful. And this is the cursive italic. Nib. I would say that this is probably one of my favorite grinds, mostly because it makes my handwriting looks ver look very nice. And then we're gonna go on to the journaler nib. And this one has a very light ink in it. Actually, I'm not gonna post that because I've had trouble with that before. Okay, so again, broader line top to bottom, thinner lighter sides, thinner line side to side. This one actually has a thinner line side to side than the cursive italic does. And then so this is the Mr. Brook. And I'll put this up to the camera so you can see it a little bit better. Doesn't help that there's like a drawing underneath here. <laughs> with a journaler nib. Oh, let's go ahead and draw the line here. And I've had absolutely no flow issues with any of these pens other than this one. And this is that's not the pen, it is the nib. So I really need to figure out what's going on with that nib. Okay, and the last one here is this architect grind. So you'll see thin line, top to bottom, thicker line side to side, and this is a medium architect. And I also really love the way this writes. So this is a custom architect grind. Oops, grink. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know what's up with that. Actually, I should probably do some squigglies for each of these so you can see. Okay. Um, and then I'll put it up to the camera so you can see the difference. I think I'd like to put a darker ink in that one. Let's see, are you gonna are you gonna get weird on me again? No, actually. And that's weird. So like sometimes it has skimpy ink flow and sometimes it doesn't. It's really bizarre. Okay. And let's see. You're gonna get different. That was kind of sloppy, but So there you go. And these are just a few of the specialty grinds that are available. Um, there are, uh, you know, I would just refer you to, to, to the internet <laughs> on that one. Because there's there are a bunch of different kinds of grinds. And actually, I had, I had never known about the journaler nib until Esther Brooke came up with it. Um, but again, it is a lot like a cursive italic. So that's it for today. I just wanted to kind of give you an introduction to the world of specialty nibs and some of the ones that I have and have been enjoying. Like I said, of these, um, I, I really love my architect grind, first off. Um, but I also really love this Dipl Diplomat Arrow. I would say um, ordering, it might be kind of a tie between the custom architect grind and the uh, cursive italic nib and then I would say the journaler nib is next and then I you know the sig nib would probably be next if I didn't have so many flow issues with it um, and then this one it, it's not necessarily a bad grind it's just that I think it's very limiting it's, it's both limiting and non-limiting because you have so many different options but there's a lot of things you need to pay attention to if you're just going to be writing but I think it's gonna be a great sketching pen, which is what I plan to use it for. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I hope to see you next time. But in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much, bye.